21 reasons for unexplained weight gain. So often people say that, well, I didn't change anything. Why am I gaining weight? Today we're going to talk about all the mechanisms and all the reasons behind these seemingly unexplained weight gains. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now we'll be in real trouble if we are gaining some weight and we buy into the general consensus, to the mainstream misconception that it's all about calories. They tell you that, oh, you're, you're just gaining weight because you're eating more and you're not exercising enough. You're gaining weight because there's more calories in than calories out. You're not burning enough calories. And while there is some fundamental truth to that, we'll be in real trouble if we just look at that, if we don't ask the question, why? Why might I be eating more? Why might my body slow down and burn less? What is changing? And the answer is that we're going to go over 21 different reasons here, but in the end, they're all going to be hormonal. It's going to depend on hormones in one shape or form because hormones determine everything about your behavior and everything about your physiology's behavior. And I want to mention one thing before we get into the numbers and the reasons. It's what we think of as aging that a lot of people blame things on aging. Oh, well, I'm just getting older. Uh, this is just happening because I'm getting older. My doctor said it's just because I'm getting older. And while aging is a mostly inevitable process, most of what we call aging is a function of disuse, deficiency, or toxicity. Disuse is use it or lose it. Your body grows at a certain rate. It has, it's pre-programmed for growth as long as you're growing when you're a teenager. But once you're fully grown, if you don't use it, the body says it's going to look around and say, oh, well, this muscle's not being used. That muscle's not being used. I'm not going to maintain body parts that are not being used. Use it or lose it. So most of muscle loss due to aging is disuse. Deficiency means your body has to have something to perform a function or to maintain tissues. If it's not getting it, it's deficient. It can't maintain tissues. It can't maintain function if you don't provide it. And we are highly deficient because of all the processed foods that we are eating. Toxicity means that the body is trying to do something, but there's stuff in the way. There's junk, there's toxins, there's debris, the signals, and the metabolic pathways are interfered with because of toxicity. So keep those in mind and understand that health, everything that we call function, is sort of like a battery. That a fully charged battery at 100% is going to make that Energizer Bunny go. But if the battery gradually drops over time, we're not going to notice the change right away. It's not like the Energizer Bunny slows down to 70% just because the battery is at 70%. It just means it has less reserves. And that's how the body works as well. That it has less reserves to cope and adapt. Which means we may not get any symptoms until we have a significant reduction in reserves. A lot of symptoms, a lot of changes that we're going to talk about may not happen until your battery is down to 50%. And again, some of that is inevitable more or less with aging, but a lot of it we can affect by exercise and proper nutrition and activation and detox and just understanding these issues properly in the category of sudden changes. So now we're talking about something that's happening really fast. It's like really out of the blue. It seems in a matter of weeks or a couple of months, there was a dramatic change. And number one reason I would say is steroids, that if someone gets corticosteroids, if they get uh, oral corticosteroids, that is a version of cortisol. And cortisol drives insulin, 
insulin resistance and weight gain. So you could gain a dramatic amount of weight in just a few weeks with, with that. Number two, obviously applying to women only, is pregnancy. That might be something that if you don't really pay attention or didn't expect it, that could cause some quick weight gain. And again, because in pregnancy there's some dramatic hormonal changes. Number three, if you start an exercise regimen that's not appropriate, if you do what you think is cardio or aerobics, but it's actually in the intensity level of anaerobics, now you're forcing your body to make cortisol, which is gonna increase hunger, it's gonna drive insulin, it's gonna drive the storage hormone insulin. And you could gain weight rather quickly. Even though you're burning calories, and it seems counterintuitive, it seems like you would exercise and lose weight, you would compensate for it because you're shifting your metabolism. You're becoming more insulin resistant and that type of training could make you ravenously hungry. I had a lot of viewers confirm to me that that's exactly what happened to them. Watch out for your exercise so that you do it correctly. Number four is not really an unexplained reason, but I just want to put it up there because if you go on a cruise and you get the unlimited soda drink package and the unlimited beer package and you take advantage of the 24-hour buffets just because it's there, yes, you could gain probably 20 pounds in a week. It's been done. I've even gone on some cruises, not with the soda package, but I just ate like a madman and gained 12, 14 pounds in a week. Number five, the holiday season. Again, most people probably expect this. It's not so unexplained. Uh, starting in November through December, we're gonna eat a lot more cookies and candy and treats as, as a culture. So that could certainly be a reason. Uh, for some people, it might be the first time they, they could get away with it on previous seasons, but something else has changed and now that holiday season just really kicks them over the edge. Number six, pathology. We could have some sort of disease or tumor, like we could have a pituitary tumor or an adrenal tumor that is producing hormones at a very, very exaggerated and unbalanced level. So again, it's all about hormones and if we have a tumor that produces cortisol that would create insulin resistance and weight gain very, very quickly. That'd be sort of like taking steroids. Number seven, and this is going to sound strange to you coming from a low carb keto channel, but you could gain weight suddenly by starting keto. And this would be if you start it and don't understand what it is. If you hear that, oh, it's all about meat and bacon and high fat, and you start eating those, but you don't reduce your carbohydrates enough. So you're still insulin resistant, and you're not reducing insulin by reducing carbs enough, and you're not getting fat adapted. Now you're gonna still have that exaggerated appetite, that sugar addiction, now you're just adding fat to it and you could w gain weight very, very quickly. So remember, you're not supposed to eat more fat and maintain carbohydrates. If you increase the fat, you have to drop the carbohydrates dramatically to let that insulin drop and to become fat adapted. Keto's not gonna work until that metabolic shift takes place. So all of these things are things that could happen pretty quickly. The underlying metabolic change could be very, very quick in a matter of weeks. And the manifestation, the weight gain, could also happen very suddenly in a matter of weeks, maybe a couple of months. Now we're gonna move on to some things that happen a little bit slower that it probably won't happen in weeks. It, might, it probably is gonna take a few to several months and the underlying mechanism would also be happening over a period of several months. This would be something like a life change. Maybe you had to move somewhere, maybe you had a divorce, maybe there was a death in the family, maybe you got a new job. So all of these large dramatic life changes can start shifting hormones, can start changing the way the body works. 
Maybe that life change was because of number nine. You became more sedentary. Maybe your previous life situation allowed you to move more. Maybe your job involved more movement. And when you stop moving, then you become more insulin resistant. You use less energy, burn fewer calories, but you don't change your eating habits. That life change could also be causing more stress. Obviously, the examples I mentioned are very, very stressful. And for some people, if it's like severe grief, that could cause the opposite effect where you just stop eating and you lose weight. But for most people, stress typically means that their body is going to look for more fast fuel. It's going to be looking for sugar, especially if you're not fat adapted. And now as you have that stress, you start eating more, you're making more cortisol from the stress and you're gaining weight, you're becoming more insulin resistant and the weight comes on. Number 11, you could also gain weight from a lack of sleep. If you don't sleep enough, that's a form of stress in itself. You're wearing, you're burning your candles at both ends. But there's also certain hormones that are secreted, that are released as part of your circadian rhythm, as part of your sleep and wake cycle. So if you don't sleep enough, you're probably not getting enough growth hormone. And growth hormone, again, is a metabolic and it's a fat burning hormone. So if your growth hormone is dropping from a lack of sleep, then that could be causing some weight gain. Number 12, working the night shift. Maybe you're working at different hours of the day, so you have to sleep at different hours of the day. So even if you get enough hours, even if you get your eight hours that your body typically depends on, you're gonna shift your hormones, you're gonna disturb your hormones by sleeping during a different time of the day. You're supposed to sleep when it's dark and be up when it's light. That's what your brain has learned. That's what your nervous system has learned in order to secrete the right hormones. So growth hormone, for example, works best if you get a couple of hours of sleep before midnight. Number 13, maybe you just started a low fat diet and to a lot of people that sounds very strange. If you listen to the government guidelines, they tell you to eat low fat, low calorie, and you're thinking, well, you know, fat has the most calories. I eat less fat, so I should have less calories. But what happens when people eat low fat is they typically eat more carbs. And when you eat more carbs, you're gonna be stimulating insulin. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. As you become more insulin resistant, your body lowers its metabolic rate and you get hungrier. So there's many different ways that you could go wrong with a low fat diet. Sometimes people just start eating more junk food. They think as long as it's low fat, then I can eat the cookies and I can eat the ice cream and I can eat the super sweetened yogurt because it's low fat. And in doing that, maybe you're eating fewer calories and just becoming more insulin resistant, but it's also possible that because you're getting super, super hungry from all that sugar stimulation, that you end up eating more calories and more food in addition to becoming insulin resistant. Number 14, maybe you decided to become a vegetarian. So before everyone yells at me, I'm not in favor of being a vegetarian typically, but I'm not saying that you can't be healthy and maintain weight being a vegetarian also. The problem is that it takes some skill, it takes some knowledge to be a healthy vegetarian. And what happens to a lot of people who just don't want to eat meat because they feel sorry, they have some spiritual reason for it, what happens then is when they don't learn enough about food, now they start depending on anything that is not an animal. So they eat french fries and they eat Doritos and they eat all kinds of other fast food, bean burritos, potato chips, candy, cookies, anything that is from a plant origin, but they're eating junk food. Okay, so again, you can be a healthy vegetarian if you really, really know what you're doing. At least most people can, not everyone can, but most people can be a healthy vegetarian. 
but the problem happens when you don't understand health and you start eating junk, you start eating any plant food because you think it's just a better way to do. And now let's talk about some of the things that sort of creep up on us over the years and it might seem unexplained but if we understand the underlying reasons and especially if we start understanding how our reserves decline over time then these would make a lot of sense. So number 15, getting older is not a reason in itself but what happens as we have disuse and deficiency and toxicity the metabolic rate slows down, the growth hormone slows down, etc. So one of the things that might be happening is that insulin resistance is catching up with us. What does that mean? Well, your blood sugar is regulated by insulin. So when you eat something, your blood sugar rises, your insulin goes up to control blood sugar and all is well. But as we eat more sugar and we eat more carbs and we eat them more frequently, it takes more and more and more and more insulin over time. And this could be building up over 10, 15, 20 years. And insulin is a fat storing hormone. In storing fat, it, in store, it delivers sugar into the cell that gets converted to fat. So in that sense, it's a fat storing hormone. And because its tendency is to store things, it means we have less access to the fuel once it's stored. It's sort of like your deep freezer that you put in the basement. You're not going to go there for a snack, so you don't have quick access to that food. That's how severe insulin resistance works. So as that insulin resistance builds up over time, you could get to a breaking point where you start gaining weight. You think you're eating the, roughly the same thing, but you don't have access to the food, you're storing more and more fat, and you're gaining weight. Number 17, your fat muscle ratio. So maybe you're maintaining your weight for 20 years, but during that time you've done a bunch of yo-yo dieting, you've been mostly inactive, you haven't used your body. So the normal aging is happening at a faster rate because of disuse, deficiency, toxicity. So your muscle mass decreases and muscles are more active. Muscles is like the machine, fat tissue is the long-term storage. So muscles are much more metabolically active. Fat tissue isn't very active at all. It's like we said, the deep freezer. So over time, the ratio can change. You start with this much muscle and this much fat, and then over a 20 year period, your muscle goes away, your fat increases, but your weight stays the same. So you think, hey, I'm doing the same, I'm doing good. But then you get to a certain point, a breaking point, and now all of a sudden the weight starts piling on because you've reached that threshold. Number 18, growth hormone. Growth hormone declines with age. That is inevitable, but we have a lot of influence over how quickly we can make it decline. If we are sedentary, if we're toxic, if we're deficient, it's going to decline faster. We can have it decline at a quick rate or we can have it decline at a much slower rate depending on our lifestyle, but it is going to go down and growth hormone is a fat burning hormone. Growth hormone keeps up your basal metabolic rate. It increases the overall activity of the body. So as it decreases, then that can also cause weight gain. Number 19, endocrine disruptors. So this is part of the toxicity bit that endocrine disruptors, endocrine is your hormone system and hormones, like we said, manages all about this, the cortisol, the insulin, the growth hormone, and endocrine disruptors are toxins. They're things like plastics and foreign hormones and metals and chemicals and pesticides that mimic the look. They look almost like your own hormones, so they fit into the same receptors, and when they fit, they block the receptor, and they can either stimulate 
a function and exaggerate something the body is normally doing or it can fit in and block it because the hormone can block something or stimulate something. So the endocrine disruptor can increase or decrease something that the body normally does. So the body has less ability, less influence to regulate these things by itself. Number 20, inflammation. So inflammation is a natural part of healing, but low grade chronic inflammation is not a good thing. That's when inflammation has gone wrong. That's when there's stuff present on, in, the, in the body year after year that's creating a little bit of irritation. So these are things like toxins. Again, they're things like foods that we don't break down completely. We don't, may not have a full-blown allergy, but we have an intolerance to those foods. We don't do well with them. And the primary ones are gonna be processed dairy, pasteurized milk, and refined grains or grains in general, but especially refined grains. They create a low grade inflammation in the body. And what that does is it changes the sensitivity of a lot of your hormones. Your hypothalamus is an organ. It sits right under the brain, between the brain and the brainstem. And it's like a relay of all the traffic and it senses your hunger and your thirst and your pH and temperature and all these different things that cause you to eat more or eat less or want to do things. And if they change, if the inflammation changes the sensitivity, then you just don't have the same function there anymore. So the hypothalamus might lose its ability to regulate leptin or ghrelin, your hunger hormones, your thyroid hormones, your metabolic hormones, your, your insulin. It can affect the resistance and the sensitivity of every one of those hormones. And on that note, a very important thing to keep in mind is the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 in your diet because they need to be about, ideally about a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning we have an equal amount of omega-3 to omega-6 in the diet. Somewhere up to about four parts omega-6 to one part omega-3 is still okay, it's still optimal. But the average person in Western society is more like a 20 part omega-6 to a one part omega-3. And what that does, it promotes inflammation. These substances are precursors to things that control inflammation in the body. So all the things that raises omega-6 are in a sense pro-inflammatory when it gets out of control. And what are those things? Well, they're primarily sugar, grain, and seed oils, seeds and nuts. And that's why a small amount of a quality seed or nut oil is not a problem, but once we start eating large amounts of refined oils especially, then that creates huge problems. And those are the only oils used in commercial cooking. So anytime you eat fast food, anytime you eat out, anytime anything is fried, you're getting all omega-6s. And for most people, they're doing pretty well, but you don't wanna to eat too many nuts because nuts and seeds are high in omega-6s. So even though they're healthy, you can get it a little bit out of control by eating too much nuts. And number 21 reason you might be gaining weight is hypothyroid. And this is a huge one. I've done separate videos on that to explain it, but hypothyroid means that your thyroid, your metabolic regulator, the thyroid is your thermostat. And hypothyroid means that it is slowing down. It's like you're just not cranking out as much heat. And one thing that you can notice if your thyroid is slowing down is that you tend to feel cold. Even in a normal temperature room where other people are doing fine, if you're just always a little chilly, a little cold to the core, then chances are you have hypothyroid. So if you've been having some unexplained weight gain, then start exploring these reasons because it's critical that you start understanding every one of these different nuances of, of metabolic function and changes in the body. 
If you just go chasing calories and you try to work out, chances are it's going to backfire. A lot of these things people do because they think they're going to lose weight, but because they don't understand the underlying mechanism or how to do it properly, it ends up backfiring and it makes things worse. If you follow this channel for a while, you know that we have videos on most of these topics or that we've included these in other videos. But if there's one that you'd like more detail and more information, please let me know and we'll try to do one specifically for that. If you enjoyed this video, then I bet you're going to love this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.